Welcome back to First Strike. Here we go. We got UFC Fight Night. We got the Roy Val Tayara card, and it's in the baby cage out there in Vegas. Take note, it's an early start. I believe they first touch gloves at 4.15 p.m. And that means the Sports Money crew will be ready to rock with you guys at 3.45. We're going to pop off and talk a little bit about this prelim card and get as far through this thing as we can as far as our best bets, our early looks, parlays, all the fun things that we have to get paid. It's going to be a big weekend. We have the NHL back in season as well. But tonight we're here to get down to the business of getting down and don't adjust, uh, don't adjust your set. Uh, MMA Jeff is not going by a different name here. He was uh, prior obligated to tonight, and Fanatical Jim has agreed to step in and uh, handle the reins today with the break that he's going to give us here. We also have Subhuman Gaucho. These are my friends and apex predators of the Octagon. Fired up for the card. Sub, how are we feeling? Great, man. Great. Um, fun night last night, Dana White Contender Series. And uh, looking forward to this Saturday, as always. I love, uh, love these Apex cards, man. Um, always always seem to seem to do well betting-wise and whatnot. Uh, they, they don't always have the same energy as the stadium shows, but uh, I love them. I love them. And uh, happy to have you with us here, Jim. How are you doing tonight? Yeah, I appreciate that, Sub, and thank you. And thanks for the invite. I'm doing well. Um, and, yeah, big shoes to fill with MMA Jeff, but I'll do my best. And a really exciting time. You know, we have uh, – we're the, right in the first week of hockey season. We got a big UFC card this weekend, football season. We got basketball around the corner. So many sports, so much to cap. And you know what? We're going to kill UFC this weekend, just like the Rangers are killing the Penguins tonight. So let's, let's get this thing started. Let's go. We love to see that. Hockey is back in swing. I know I'm joined with some hockey fans here. Can't help the Red Wings guy, but uh, the rest of us still have hope. That being said, let's hope for a big UFC card. As we dig into it again, the deal with First Strike, we give you our three favorite early looks that cook the books, and we're going to volley it right off here. We're going to bring him in, taking the reins for MMA Jeff. It's the man that is the human flamethrower. Torches the books, and he's going to give us a look on this rodriguez Morono fight. Fanatical Jim, talk to us about how we get paid. Open the card up. Let's go. Well, I appreciate it, Mike. Thanks. Yeah, so we have Daniel Rodriguez against Alex Morono. And I'll preface this with saying I'm a big Daniel Rodriguez fan. I have been for quite a while. Um, seven to one to start out in the UFC. He started on the contender series. He got a decision win. Dana decided to not bring him in. So he goes on the regional scene again, gets a quick knockout. And Dana's like, I'm not even going to bother with, with the contender series again. I'm going to bring in the UFC. And he goes out and goes seven to one. Last three fights, he, he's on a three fight losing streak. But you know, you look at the fighters he's faced, Neil Magny, Ian Gary. Kevin, Kelvin Gastelum, you know, big time fighters. And his last fight against Gastelum, they had to move that fight up to a catch bit at 185 because Gastelum came in too heavy. And he used that weight to take him down four times. And Gastelum was pretty much losing the first round until he started getting those takedowns because Dan, Dan Rodriguez was piecing him up on the feet. Um, it, it didn't matter. He still got 30% of his purse and he got a six fight contract out of it because his loyalty to keep, to accept that fight and keep going with it. Dana gave him a six-fight contract out of that. And he wants to prove himself. This is not a guy that just got his bag and now he's in a coast. He wants to prove that he can come back and be, get back on the winning streak. streak. And he's going to do that here, I think, in, in my opinion, against Alex Morono. Alex Morono has a lot of miles on the tires. If you compare his 34 years old to, to Dana Rodriguez's 37, I mean, it's almost double the amount of fights that he has. And, and Morono is a lot different than when he was uh, when he first came into the UFC. He, he used to be more of a grappler. He used to be more of a volume striker. Now he's he's more of a slower striker. He likes he prefers stand up, and if he stands up, which he probably will in this fight against Dan Rodriguez, I am going to get a basically two and a half to to two x significant strike advantage with Dan Rodriguez. Dan Rodriguez throws a ton of volume. You put his, you put them side by side, and Dan Rodriguez is throwing about seven and a half significant strikes per minute versus Alex Moreno's three to three and a half. So, like I said before, if this stays fifteen minutes, Dan Rodriguez has the advantage. I think these guys are both durable, so I'm going to go to decision on this. My official play is Dan Rodriguez by decision at plus 160. I think over 15 minutes, I get a 15-minute striking fest, and in that case, give me Dan Rodriguez all day. Sub, I know you're on a, a big-time co-main event on this card. We have Brad Tavares against the Iron Turtle, John Young Park. So how do you see this fight going? Um, yeah, man, I'm excited for this one. Um, two UFC veterans we got here. Um, on the one hand, you got you got Brad Tavares. I mean, you want to talk about a UFC veteran? 
The guy has an entire 24 fights in the organization, and uh, he's really fought the who's who. He's been around for a long time. Good technical kickboxer you've got here. And uh, excellent takedown defense. Never been submitted. Rarely gets taken down. So he's got some good things going on with his game. But uh, he's had a tough go of it lately, just uh, two and three in his last five. And, you know, some, some of these – you don't want to punish him too bad for. Uh, he gets knocked out by RoboCop in round three. Lots of people get knocked out by RoboCop. Uh, in fact, uh, his opponent here, the Iron Turtle, got knocked out by RoboCop not so so long ago. I think RoboCop has knocked out a total of four competitors on this fight card. Um, but in the end, uh, I do think that Tavares is pretty durable still. I think he's starting to slow down a little bit, but I think he can hang in there. And on the other side, the Iron Turtle here. Uh, this is really a, a fighter that I uh, am a big fan of. So it's a bit of a homer pick, I must admit. But he's been in a good way lately, 4-1 and one in his last five. And his only loss in there to uh, Andre Muniz last year. Quite frankly, I think he won that fight. So he could easily be 5-0. and oh. And at this stage, I think the Iron Turtle has just has a little bit more in the tank. Tavares is starting to get up there in age. I think his uh, his foot speed and his footwork is starting to suffer as a result. And the Iron Turtle just a little bit snappier with the punches and what have you. So I'm going to take Iron Turtle by decision here. I worry a little bit that uh, he can be hurt. And on the other hand, that Brad Tavares could have some waning durability at 36 years of age, but you know, Brad Tavares is a guy that took the likes of, you know, Yuel Romero to a decision, Israel Adesanya to a decision, Drickus Duplessis to a decision. He's been in there with some of the best, and uh, he can get that uh, get that time over the finish line there. So in the end, uh, the Iron Turtle, John Yu Park, by decision, gets you a plus 145. That's going to be my play on this one. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Uh, I can't say word one. I mean, listen, that's a nickname and a half. There, I've heard you say Iron Turtle about, I don't know, six, seven times in the last hour or so, and it makes me laugh every single time. But I don't think there's anything to laugh about there. That's a great price at plus one forty-five. Look, I'm coming off a disappointing co-main for myself this past fight card, and I got to go back to old reliable. When I say old reliable, I'm looking at a little Pierce Sabatini, and old reliable to me is where do the best fighters come from? We all know it, not Dagestan, not Kazakhstan. They come from Philadelphia, and that's where Pat Sabatini comes out of here. Uh, both these guys coming off of losses, Pierce with back-to-back -back losses. I don't want to oversimplify this one here, but I think in terms of path to victory, Pierce really stands apart with just one opportunity to get it done, and that is going to be a judge's decision. Yeah, he could potentially come out there and find himself with a, a miraculous KO, but I can't see that being in the cards. And what we know about this guy – He's not a takedown guy. He's got no takedowns out there on the card. And, you know, just plain and simply put here, um, kind of a similar trajectory, I guess, in terms of the way that Sabatini started his card off. He was 4-0, oh, um, you know, Sabatini. Took himself a little 1-2 and two path in his last three. But, uh, you know, you, you get humble. You learn a little bit in this game. And what's a little difficult for me to swallow here is uh, the 4-inch – height differentiation here. Sabatini is going to have to be punching up in this spot out there. But uh, I think at the end of the day, if you look at some of the competition that he's lost to, it was Lopes, it was Jackson. Um, you know, you look at all fighters not being created equal. Lopes has gone out there and done some great things. Um, you know, Jackson at the same time kind of was a, was a lucky punch type of situation. I can discount that. And I think there's just more tools in the uh, shed for Pat Sabatini to go find a victory. Not only is the situation where he's can, you know, 50 50 coin flip with the decision, but this man is 12 and 0 by submission. If uh, we do see a situation where um, Pierce wants to get cute and try for a takedown and somehow gets reversed out of it and ends up on his back, that's going to be a challenge. Sabatini could finish this guy, and it just comes down to more paths to victory. There are very more opportunities for Sabatini. I see it's a linear fight for Pierce. It's decision or bust. Sabatini's got the sub. He can go out there and win outright with a late round type of knockout, or he can pick up that judge's decision. And the interesting part about this line movement, boys, we saw this thing come way down, and it started to bounce all the way back up. In fact, recent numbers, we were just talking pre-fight card here. 
Uh, Sabatini plus 150 over on DraftKings. Huge discrepancy, so you want to shop around. I just saw this was plus 126 over on FanDuel. I think we got to get a little Sabatini action in our lives, and it's a great plus number. It's a great bounce back spot for Sabatini. It's a great bounce back spot for me to get in the W's with first strike, boys. Let's get after it, you guys. As we move forward, I mentioned here the three fights. We've got Rodriguez by decision, plus 160. We've got Sabatini at plus 150, and we've got the Iron Turtle. I got to say it, too, at plus 145, boys. Always a pleasure to have you join us here with First Strike. Thank you for your time. Thank you for guys that are watching. Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button. We'll do a little caveat here. If you guys do have some fights you want us to break down that maybe are later in the card, put them in the comments so that when we start with the uh, live stream on Saturday, we can make sure to include those fights that you guys want to talk about or you want us to talk about as well. Hit that thumbs up button. On behalf of Sports Money, on behalf of Fanatical Jim, Subhuman Gaucho, and MMA Jeff playing hooky. Wish you guys the best of luck. Let's have a great fight weekend, and we'll see you guys Saturday with the live stream. Let's get that cash, boys. Let's go.